Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Michal Brigid and I am Cloud Solutions Architect uh, from Poland. Uh, today, I want, to I want to show you my presentation about AWS organizations, uh, which will help you uh, in your migration to AWS Cloud. Okay, you should see my presentation right now. Uh, I will uh, tell you about AWS organizations and uh, uh, all uh, features like service control policies, uh, which uh, will help you uh, to maintain a, a secure configuration of your whole environment. I will also compare our landing zone account uh, versus Active Directory Federation. Uh, this is how you uh, manage your users and the access uh, to your AWS accounts. Uh, and uh, I will uh, tell you how to automate everything uh, so it's easily uh, reviewable and uh, deployable. Let's start with AWS organizations. Uh, here you can see a diagram of uh, my, uh, my AWS setup uh, which I created um, at PGS software. Uh, here you can see multiple AWS accounts. Uh, on the left side, uh, we can see organization root account, which is the heart of our organization. Uh, here is the place where you configure uh, all your uh, uh, governance and uh, where, you, where you create all other accounts. Uh, below that, we can see a landing zone account. Uh, this is an optional account if you are not using any uh, external uh, user management systems like Okta or uh, Active Directory. You can use landing zone account and create uh, all your users in a single place and then let them, uh, let them assume roles on different accounts. Uh, below that, we have a log account where we can store all our logs uh, for audit uh, and uh, then we can archive them there. Uh, in the middle, we can see a corporate data center. That's not a AWS account. That's your data center. Uh, it's here uh, to show that we can easily configure a tunnel between your data center and AWS. And uh, also, you have your AD uh, somewhere. And this is the place where I put it. Uh, shared services account in the middle uh, is the account where you have all your uh, shared uh, uh, tools uh, like uh, Jenkins or other automation management uh, tools. Uh, you can have your uh, uh, you can have, you can have your auditing uh, tools here, checking all uh, network traffic, uh, uh, and also you can uh, keep your uh, secrets uh, in this place, like uh, keys or uh, passwords, and then share access to those resources with uh, your application related accounts. Below shared services account, there's uh, Azure uh, also mentioned here. Uh, you can use AD from Azure as well. Uh, on the right side, we have uh, dev account, stage account and product account. Those are your uh, project related accounts that some different environments. AWS organizations uh, allows you to uh, keep your uh, billings in one place. Uh, you can have a single payer account uh, and see how much all your accounts are uh, spending each month. You can also restrict uh, actions on your member accounts and uh, you can also be sure that uh, everything is uh, being logged uh, to your CloudTrail uh, logs because uh, you cannot disable logs on member accounts, which were enabled on your master account. Oops. Service control policies uh, are documents uh, created on your uh, master account, master organization account, uh, in which you uh, grant uh, some permissions to member accounts. Uh, you can grant permissions and you can uh, also deny some actions, uh, like uh, should, for example, prevent uh, uh, member accounts from leaving your organization. Uh, you should protect your account and billing settings so no one will uh, uh, change anything there. Uh, also, uh, it's a good idea to protect uh, IAM roles, uh, which are used to uh, log into that account uh, from your other accounts, like your organization uh, master account or landing zone. And also, if you are using Active Directory or Okta, 
uh, as uh, user uh, providers, you should protect those identity providers as well. Uh, next thing, um, member, member accounts. Uh, on member accounts, you should uh, prevent uh, login profile creation. Uh, this uh, is uh, just a console uh, password, so log you should prevent logging into the console, AWS console directly uh, and uh, pre prevent also creating access keys. Uh, both should be used from landing zone account or Active Directory. Uh, this is also the place where you can specify allowed instance types. Uh, for example, you want to prevent uh, your developers from uh, uh, spawning uh, big instances on your sandbox accounts. Uh, and uh, you, can, uh, you can also spe specify required tags. Uh, for example, no one uh, will be uh, able to create new EC2 instance, new virtual machine without uh, tags uh, like name, owner, or maybe cost center. Uh, also, there are some services which uh, cost a lot and uh, will probably never be used in your environment. So this is also the place where you can restrict those uh, specific services and prevent users from creating them. Uh, landing zone. Uh, landing zone account uh, should be used only to uh, log in to your AWS uh, account, IAM account, and then uh, to jump to different accounts based on the uh, role and group uh, uh, which you're a member of. Uh, so on this, uh, for, for, for this AWS account, uh, you should prevent all actions except uh, managing your IAM account on that uh, uh, single AWS account and also assuming roles in other accounts. Uh, different types of ac uh, access that uh, I mentioned before, uh, landing zone uh, or active directory. Uh, for landing zone, uh, if you have a single AWS account uh, where you have your IAM users, uh, so you don't need to remember where your users uh, were created. Uh, you just uh, group your users on that account to different uh, groups uh, and uh, then allow those groups to log into different accounts, uh, assuming roles. Uh, so everything should be prepared on this landing zone account for your IAM users. Uh, for Active Directory, uh, you have your uh, users created in your AD, uh, either uh, in your uh, uh, local AD or Azure. And uh, then you just need to create identity provider on your all AWS accounts, uh, configure it to uh, talk to your AD. And then, uh, for example, create ADFS uh, uh, server, uh, which uh, uh, lets you log in with your AD credentials and then select uh, AWS account uh, on which you want to uh, log in. Here's the example of uh, PGS IDFS. Uh, as you can see, we can just select the AWS and uh, log in using our AD credentials. Uh, now for the baseline configuration. Um, landing zone account uh, as a baseline configuration uh, should have uh, IAM uh, groups, users, and policies. Uh, for your other accounts. Uh, uh, let's say we have uh, application account and application is called foo. So from the landing zone, uh, you should uh, be able to create the AM users and then uh, assign them to, uh, to a group uh, foo admins, uh, foo auditor, foo developer, or foo DB, DB admin. And then uh, these groups, uh, We'll have uh, a policy uh, which uh, allows those users to assume a role, uh, admin role on foo account or DB admin or other role on that account. The, only this role, no other role will be allowed. Uh, also, uh, Landing Zone should have uh, account password policy uh, just to be sure that uh, passwords are uh, complex enough. Uh, I always set uh, password uh, length, uh, minimum password length to 24 or, or even more uh, just to uh, make people use uh, password managers and not remember 
their passwords. Uh, also on Linux down, you can create account alias, uh, which will be used in uh, login link, uh, so it's uh, easier to remember. Uh, member accounts uh, should uh, be configured with the roles mentioned before. Uh, so if you are uh, using uh, roles like admin, read only, auditor, or DB admin, create roles uh, with those names uh, and uh, assign policies to those roles. So for example, admin will have admin access policy, but DB admin will also only have uh, uh, RDS uh, admin or other uh, other services required by his. Uh, by his position. Um, and uh, those roles should trust uh, landing zone accounts, so anyone from landing zone will be allowed to assume them. Billing alerts. Uh, this is very interesting uh, part. Uh, uh, you may think that the billing alerts will just uh, tell you uh, how much uh, you will spend this month, but uh, this is also a security uh, thing. Uh, let's say you have incremental alerts uh, and uh, you know that your application uh, uh, is, uh, using, is using resources for, for example, 1,000 uh, in first week, then in second week it will be uh, one and a half, and then you have some uh, compute, more computing uh, analytics, etc. And at the end of the month it should be around uh, 4,000. And uh, you already know uh, when you get those alerts, you already know uh, how much your application should cost you. And uh, one day you get your 4,000 uh, alert, uh, not at the end of the month, but in the middle. Then you know something bad is happening and you should immediately check it. Uh, also, uh, billing uh, alerts can be used to prevent uh, accounts from creating more resources. Uh, if you are uh, letting your uh, your developers to play on a sandbox account, for example, uh, you can uh, use uh, service control policy, preventing them from creating anything new on an account that uh, has already exceeded uh, uh, the threshold. And now uh, automation. Uh, all things mentioned before can be easily automated using Terraform. Uh, everything uh, should be uh, defined as a code. Uh, to be uh, able to review it, you can run your code reviews with your different, uh, different people and uh, deploy only approved parts of your infrastructure. Uh, you can divide uh, automation of the different uh, different steps. Uh, first step uh, covers uh, creation of the organization itself, uh, organizational units, and the service control policies. Then uh, step two uh, is creating all your member accounts, and step three uh, configuring all your member accounts. Uh, for user management, uh, it is also possible to automate it uh, using Terraform. Uh, Terraform uses uh, Keybase IO uh, public keys uh, to automatically encrypt all generated passwords, uh, which can be easily distributed to your uh, users uh, using email. Thank you.